Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball. Your World Baseball Classic champions are Japan, and we're adding some rule changes. Let's go, Japan. Take that, United players States. Players only. It's players only. Your two Blitzball MVPs. Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball, presented to you by Seat Geek. People, it's time to get your seats. We're a week out from games. Major League Baseball games that matter. Um, so make sure you go to SeatGeek. Code JOHNBOY PRESEASON. If you've used any SeatGeek codes before, you're fine. You can use that one. You'll get 15% off whether you're a first-time buyer or not. Code JOHNBOY PRESEASON. Download the app for 15% off. Go to one of your team's opening week games, man. Uh, next Thursday, we're going to be streaming. Uh, and Trev, we just got a delicioso taste of real baseball. Past regular season baseball. Past opening day baseball. IMO. The World Baseball Classic ended pretty... In a scripted way. We've already talked about the simulation a little bit for how, how much... Where the final ended up. So, Trev... <gasps> How are you doing? You can't lead into me with simulation. Oh, I talk. will. I'm doing great. Yes, uh, the finals was awesome, but I think the WBC on a whole really seemed like it was scripted. We had some incredible games, uh, some come from behind victories. We had, you know, the Dark Horse coming out uh, in Mexico, even though if you looked at their roster, they were really good. Uh, but yes, now we're like kind of past that. We're definitely going to talk about the WBC today, but I'm kind of struggling because. Now we got like this week and I'm trying to get back into spring training. It's it's there's been spring training this whole time. Have you even paid attention at all? Cause I haven't. Now I got to get my mind back on regular season baseball because it is coming and it is here. And there are some incredible storylines for that. Uh, and we'll, we'll touch on a few of them today. It's players only, you know, we get a little squirrely on these apps, but um, to answer your question, I'm doing great. It's good to see your face. A little squirrely would be an understatement. Um, Yeah, I mean, I I sent Trev. There's a viral video going around that's a computer-generated video of a giant Maglodon shark that, like, kills a ship, and Trev's been watching that on repeat. Um, Man, (laughs) we'll save that for the end. Uh, And, yeah, I was just... Trev, I'm so excited from a week out for games. Like, someone in our AMP chat that we go on for these shows... Uh, they said Estery Cruz, Ru- Estery Ruiz doing things, eyeball emojis. The you know the versatile outfielder that got traded to Oakland. Like I'm excited to start thinking about that because I mean right now I'm just not. We we just came out of the WBC and I don't watch as many Oakland spring training games as I'd like to. Um, Trev, we got to wrap up the WBC. We're gonna start with the championship game because it it just happened and we'll touch upon. Uh, Mexico and Japan, because that was one of the... That's just a great baseball game. Uh, But we got the same last night. Um, Trevor, I'll kick it to you, because I... uh, (laughs) I mean, it was getting laid on the couch uh, for myself, so I was having some deep and heavy thoughts about baseball (laughs) as a whole. Um, You know, diving... We should probably do the the gameplay a little bit and what happened um, with the USA. Trey Turner jumping out again. With his fifth home run of the tournament, uh, got slid up the lineup, hits a solo home run. Uh, future Yankee third baseman hits a home run from Japan. And then uh, Japan kind of takes over, and it all ends in the culmination of you, Darvish, and Shohei Otani coming out back to back out of the bullpen. That Schwarber at bat is unreal. Um, unreal, unreal. Aaron Loop saves the day at one point. Trevor Plouffe, I'll, uh, I'll let you run. I thought that, and you know I don't give managers credit, like ever, but I right. thought the way Japan was managed was beautiful. I even thought Mark DeRosa did an excellent job. And, he, you know, you mentioned he moved Trey Turner up to the sixth spot. And I said before that, don't mess with this guy. A thousand percent keep him, agree. In, keep him in the nine hole, leave him there. And I guarantee DeRosa was thinking the same thing until our boy Pops went in the first inning. And now he's like, I'm a god. Genius. See these decisions I make? Yeah. I am a genius. So Trey made uh, DeRosa look really good right there. 
And then I don't know about future Yankee third baseman. I think the Twins will be in, uh, oh. uh, in play for a lot of these guys coming over from Japan. But that dude's an absolute tank. Thick. Murakami, like, you know, he we saw him come to life in that Mexico game. Right, rock the it game off. winner. Very next swing off Merrill Kelly, who just, no offense to Merrill, he let a dick shot in there. Yeah. 92 miles an hour right down the middle. He did not miss it. But that guy can play a little bit of third base, too. He's moving there. Kind of a thick boy like yourself. Athleticism doing it. Um, and, you know, Japan, I thought the U.S.'s offense was just going to go and be too much. Uh, I've called it the greatest lineup ever assembled, and I probably stand by that. I mean, people, this was one game. Relax. It's an incredible lineup from top to bottom, and Japan's pitching just went and shut them down, man. Whether... Whether it was the splitter that was giving them trouble or the high velo, like yeah. the power was there as well, and the and the U.S. bats just really didn't have an answer. And you knew Japan was going to chip across a few runs uh, against our pitching, but I thought our guys did an excellent job there as well. So I think it really came down to the offense being held down by Japan's starting pitching. We had our chance uh, there at the end of the game. Uh, we got the dream matchup. We get Jeff McNeil walking <laughs> on a close pitch. Shohei wanted that one. You got Mookie Betts, Mike Trout, Paul Goldschmidt coming up against Shohei Otani. You thought it was going to happen, and then Mookie hits into that Taylor made double play, which well, set up you know the Mike Trout Otani at bat. All in all, it was a great game. We know what the end outcome was. You're happy to see Otani celebrating like that. You would have been happy to see Mike Trout celebrating like that. It was kind of a win-win situation, I think, for baseball fans right there. Um, I, but an incredible game. I, I tweeted it out. Uh, and So, A, it's the sport of baseball. I, I think if those two teams teed it up 50 times, I think you're looking at a 26-24 type split. Like Those teams last night were evenly matched, which I – I think, you know, when we talked about, uh, you know, Dream Team got thrown out for Team USA and had been a talking point since the start of the tournament, um, that, you know, the lineup, absolutely. You're, you're still missing a few guys, you know. I think Aaron Judge could have found a slot in that lineup if they really needed. And, you know, it, there's there's other guys in baseball. But the pitching staff, there was a lot of names that weren't there. And it, it A, I think it was the WBC being new. I think it's or newer. How it hasn't happened in a while. Um, I think if you're an agent, <laughs> you tell your pitcher the last thing we need is more high stress innings. You know, I I had some of my buddies tuning in, uh, kind of to the WBC really for the first time, um, and you know, I it shouldn't be shots fired at these guys because they earn their spots on the team. But Merrill Kelly to Kyle Freeland, you know, I have a lot of buddies that are you know just sports fans and don't follow baseball, and they were like, hey, you know. Where's a Garrett Cole? Where's a, uh, where's Max Freed? Where's, you know, there, there's a lot of names on the pitching side that, that didn't uh, come to Team USA, and that's fine. Like, I, I understand all the reasons why, but I think they're going to be there next time uh, after this experience. Um, and the other thing I want to say about Japan is I, I remember these, these games in past years, and, and even there was a Little League World Series vibe to this tournament just growing up, right? And I, I think Joe's McFly pegged it the best that it was, uh, they, were play, they weren't playing for money in these games. They, they were playing for passion in their country. Like, they, they were out there to win for other reasons. You know, when it's season and a team kicks off, obviously you, you do it for your team and it's not, the dollar isn't driving it, but it's in the back of your head. For this, this wasn't going to change any way the players play. That Mike Trout hustle double to start the game? Are you oh. kidding me? I mean, I, I all of us were saying I'd love to see that in October because that was like, that was a different gear. Um, that for Japan, where I was going with that whole thing, normally in previous tournaments, you see one or two guys that you're like, ooh, like, you know, watch out for you, Darvish, in a couple years. That whole team could yes. ball and be on MLB teams Tomorrow, the shortstop, the best defensive shortstop ever, whose throwing hand had a broken pinky. Yes. We had Aaron Arenado came out of the game after not getting hurt because, you know, <laughs> precautionary got hit in the hand. He was fine, but they did it precautionary. He was playing with a broken finger on his throwing hand. So you have an equally talented team where guys wanted it more, and I think you saw the result. And, and after the end of all, that whole speech, 
Schwarber runs into that 3-0 fastball down the middle, and we're talking about a Love USA that. victory. So that's that's baseball, baby. But it was a beautiful scene um, and the culmination that everyone has now talked about uh, for hours. Otani and Trout, the, the teammates, and, you know, <laughs> Trout was the best to be in baseball for, you know, a seven-year period, and then he gets this teammate who does something we've never seen before. Um, and the story about Otani and his manager, how he's Japan's Joe Madden, and he's the one that talked Otani into staying a two-way guy. Like, it was a beautiful night, Trev. It was a beautiful night, and it was ruined in the morning because for some <laughs> reason, I had ESPN on oh, in my house. God. I, I, I like never had the TV on in my house, okay? But I did. So I got to hear Mad Dog Russo's take on it. I got to hear some other fucking dude. I don't know their names. But they're talking about this at bat, and they're like, "Yeah, it was nice to see Mike Trout up there, except he didn't perform." It's like, how? What are you talking about? Watch the at bat, the pitches that were thrown to him for him to even be even close to that last pitch, which he was. Yeah, he put a good swing on that freaking nasty pitch. Was not off balance at all. That was a good at bat. He worked to count to three two against a guy who we probably has never seen before, blowing a hunch, one hundred and two. Mm. And then hits him with the 89 mile an hour 3 2 slide ball on the edge of the plate. Mike Trout put up a nice at bat. Did he get the result he wanted? No. But don't tell me this guy doesn't go up there and perform. Get out of here, man. I just, it makes me upset, Jake. And I don't want to oh, be upset. Trev, because it, it was a beautiful, beautiful tournament. And I'd rather convey that aspect of it. And yes, did I put out that I was team swing on that 3 0 Schwarber pitch? Of course yeah. I did, because I am team swing right there. The guy's already seen three pitches. You don't need to see what a strike looks like. What That is, like, get that out yeah. of your head. You see the guy's motion. You see the window. You see what his pitches are doing. You don't need to see a ball right down the middle to get ready for a ball right down the middle. The guy just missed it. That's it. And by he didn't way, miss the next one, did he? No, he homers in his next at bat, a double-digit pitch at bat, which is incredible. Poppy laid a 20 on Schwarber Homer and before the game. I mean, that was an easy 100 bucks. Whoops. You um, did do that, didn't you? But, uh, yeah, I mean, 3-0. And by the way, it was a fastball down the middle. Like It's, right not, like, it's not like he threw a changeup and Schwarber rolled it over. Like, no, he was probably an eighth of an inch from hitting that 450 feet. So, yeah, I mean, it, it was what it was. Um, you know, the, the rest of the offense went cold. And it, it's so brutal, and it's... You know, I, I've heard a lot of people saying that the WBC championship should come down to three games. I disagree. I kind of like the Little League. You got one game. So, like, you know, I, I'm sorry, Goldschmidt, who had an incredible tournament, but he, he had some tough at-bats last night. And that's, yeah. that's how the cookie crumbles. So I obviously get the argument, make it three games, because I think that's probably more fair and you get a better winner. But I like that this is a different tournament. That's kind of been the whole argument, and it's it's why some people have been having trouble embracing it. But, like, if you just say, this is different, this is how this works, uh, I think I think that's when you end up getting moments. Um, and we got so many baseball so moments, many moments over the past 24 hours, going back to the Mexican-Japan. Remember the Randy Rosarena show? Um, I mean, that was damn right. I do. That was, that was unreal. Um, let, let's close off anything else there is with the championship game. Uh, Turner Homer again was insane. Um, I will say this about the last at bat Trev. Um, did I want Shohei to throw the three, two heater? Cause trout swung through two. Yes. Do I think Otani threw the right pitch? Absolutely. But in my script, in my simulation, Otani pumps another heater right past him. Um, that see that's I, I disagree big time right there, dude. You're gonna give Mike Trout another shot at that? Oh, heater? he shouldn't. Shohei threw the right pitch, but Trout swung through two heaters. If he swings through a third, that's just my simulation. Okay. Oh man. Um. Yeah. I I want to make it clear that although I would would like to see some of the bigger name starting pitchers specifically join this team. In 2026, the pitching was not the problem. I think they put us in a hole in the in the it's true. in the group stage when they gave a bunch of runs to Mexico, uh, but got out of that. And then they were they were very solid, very solid. So you cannot put this on the starting pitching on this team. You can. I think it's fair to say that we'd like to see some of those other guys come and do it. We would have liked to see Judge. Why didn't Judge do it? Um, he's played the captain card. It's like it's my first spring training as Yankees captain. Uh, uh, 
uh, got to lead the team. We have a lot of rookies that are going to be part of the team. I, I think if we're being fully honest, I think Judge kind of was half out, and I think the Yankees were full out, and that together was like, yeah. all right. I don't yeah. it, let everyone do what they want to do with their careers. Um, usually I say that when guys are about to sign a contract, not that it already did. Judge has said. Right. Uh, but, dude, I mean, look, I think that, and I've said this on the show way before the WBC came out, it's playing for the Team USA is a completely different type of baseball. And it, and, and it is to me, and I, and again, I said this, it's it's like a selfless type of baseball that you don't get once you go past, I mean, college. Right. It's it's like a high school slash college experience where you're playing for you and the other guys around you, and that's it. Once you get into pro ball, that money is always what you're hunting, dude. And you know what? You could say that's bullshit. You can say that's bullshit, but you know, you put a lot in to a life that's very the window small and the chance of you actually making it is small. And you put a lot into that. So when you get to, into a position where like, hey man, like I just got to perform during the regular season so I can support my family and like cash in on this opportunity. Like I don't fault anybody for not playing in those situations. Not one bit at all. I, I, but it is a different type of game and you hear all these guys say it. And I think that's got to, that's got to get into some guys' heads that weren't there. When Mike oh, Trout yeah. is saying this is like one of the best weeks of my life, when Shohei Otani says this is the biggest moment in my baseball career, like it's it's putting it into people's heads. And I think we're gonna have like we're gonna have too many people signing up for 2026. I, I which was, is gonna be great. I was gonna preface this because he's your guy and he's he's become our guy. Um, but it's actually a really I think I'm saying a nice thing. Like, do you think Jack Flaherty didn't want to be out there pitching for Team USA? But he has a contract year coming up. Where if he's healthy the whole year and and is Jack Flaherty, he's in line for nine figures. That for him to go and throw out bullets in this and break his routine, it's the wrong move. Like, it's just the wrong decision for him. So, like, I mean, knowing that guy how we do now, like, oh, my God, in front of that crowd? Like, it, that's a dream. But he'll he'll get the contract this year and we'll see him in three years. Problem solved. It's funny that you brought him up. How about that? Because I know for a fact <laughs> that Jack Flaherty really, really wanted to be out there last night. Yeah. And he had a 90-pitch day in spring training yesterday, about yeah. two hours from that facility. And again, the pitching did great for us last night, yeah. so it's not like a, we're worried about that. But yeah, I mean, guys are already feeling that way for sure. 0 for 7 runners in scoring position. Japan was also 0 for 5, by the way. Um, and that would have easily changed the game with, with one hit there. And uh, I didn't fully... I drove this home with the Japanese lineup. Every pitcher... Like, normally in tournaments like this, whether World Series or World Baseball Classics previ previously, you know, you'd see the couple guys. You, you'd see, um, you know, Roki Sasaki, and you're like, wow, that dude is it. He's going to be playing pro ball in a couple years. I can't wait. You know, there's one guy in the lineup that you're like, yeah, he's coming up. This whole team, I mean, Kondo hitting two hole. I was like, wait, they're batting him before Yoshida? Um, uh, Murakami, he's already playing third for the Yanks. Okamoto, I thought it was funny. The Japanese manager said, like, who's going to be the guy people yeah. are talking about coming out? And they were like, Okamoto is just kind of the all-around guy. Like, he does it all. He plays defense. He hits. He's contact power. Um, that whole team... Um, was incredible, and uh, you know, Trev, I don't know how heavy, heavy you want to get. Every pitcher that came out was lights out, lights, lights out, out, pumping mid to high nineties. Like this wasn't in previous tournaments. You'd see a bullpen guy come out, and they're like, "Yeah, this, you know, this guy's a legend, but he throws eighty eight, and you just see Team USA light up. That is over. The technology, the health, everything that goes into it is spread around the world. That the world has caught up. Like, do I think USA has better all-around talent? Yes. But look what Japan put on the field. That was not smoke and mirrors. That was the better team last night. So um, the other thing, Trev, and I don't know if we want to go down this wormhole. Oh, baby. For years, I've heard Smoltz and other analysts and other USA baseball guys say that leg kick and that stance, you know, once the velocity gets... High enough, it just doesn't work. Hey, guess what? For a few of these guys, it's working, man. 
that maybe we need to go back to the drawing board a little bit. Because, like, <laughs> Murakami's stance looks like it's working. Looks like it's working. Like, the fact that we label that as a, a Japanese or Asian batting stance, like, maybe we have to throw that out because it works. I mean, do we really need to go down this right now? <laughs> I know I'm asking. Do you really want guy. me to come on here and tell you my true thoughts on some of these guys that are out there talking about baseball right now? I don't know, man. Oh. A Rod wow. said they don't even have analytics in Japan. <laughs> that was nuts. That was nuts. <laughs> I didn't think that was true. I thought Jolly was fucking around on that tweet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They were doing I don't, shifts, man. I just <laughs> What were they? What do they do in Japan? A Rod, they just bunt all day long and move the runner over. Like, I think I know what these guys are trying to convey, right? Because I've said some of this. I enjoy the fact that it's not all about slug. That there is still an aspect of the game within the game that they seem to do more often than our big big teams do, and I think as we've talked about on talking baseball quite a bit, sometimes you got to zig when teams are zagging, you know, look at the Indy or the guardians last year, being able to do what they did, kind of put their focus on contact and base running and taking extra bases. Like that's a lot of things get said in spring training, but to the, for them to go out and do it and then win the central was awesome. I, I get that Japan bunted in the semifinals and I kind of like, I loved it. I did. Okay. I'm like, that, that gets me going for a couple of different reasons. One team USA. When's the last time? Like they practice bunt defense. Like teams just don't they bunt did anymore. They don't. So it's like, it just creates a little bit of havoc out there. That's why I enjoy it. Um, but dude, I just baseball. Now we have seen, Time and time again, guys come into the major leagues from different countries that play the game a little bit differently. And how often do we just go, oh, that's, that doesn't look the same. That doesn't look right. We don't like it. But then give it a second. Let these guys actually play the game. You'll fall in love with it. Guess what? Like the Latin baseball culture has come and taken over the U.S. Yeah. Bottom freaking line. The passion that we have now as Americans comes from freaking Latin America and these right. countries. They've been doing that forever. And before we were throwing baseballs at their head when they did it a little bit in our country. And now look, let the kids play. Let's do, you know, you know it's, it's, don't be stuck in the past, dude. Do More not time. be stuck in the past because there's beautiful stuff coming our way. You mentioned those guys that are uh, in Japan. They're coming, right? They're coming. And that's awesome that we have that in the U S let's just be thankful that we have the premier right. league in the U S because we're going to get some of these guys over here and we're going to get to admire them from close up rather than from afar. That's how you should approach the game. Let's embrace this new culture. Let's embrace what these guys bring to the game. It's beautiful. We're moving forward. We don't care about what you did in the freaking nineties, bro. Mm. I can't. Oh, dude. I, I, uh, you know, I dropped the big bro right there. Dude, we're we're deep in the baseball world that, you know, we got to play nice with everyone. There there's t there's times with Smoltz I can't do it. Um and that's that's just honest. Like I um I don't know. I know he was very complimentary to Otani and everything he does last night, but there's there's just a couple lines that you're just like, "Come on, man." Like he was talking about when when is Otani going to run out? <laughs> and it's like, "Hey, dude, we'll cover that when it happens. Like we're let's enjoy this." The guy just went to the bullpen <laughs> in the middle of the game. He hasn't Twice. pitched in relief since 2016 and came out and ran through the freaking heart of the US order. Don't tell me when's this guy going to run out. Uh fuck, dude. A couple other things. I just I just think it's funny going back to the batting stances thing. Like you know, we see Kevin Euclid come up with a funny stance, and we're like, oh, okay, guy with a weird batting stance. But, <laughs> hey, you just got to find a way to put the bat on the ball. I don't really care how. And, Trev, the other thing that I think is funny about American baseball over the past decade, we've seen between shifts and, um, you know, more offense, more homers. Our guy, Murakami, who's going to be playing third base for the Yankees, as you mentioned, um, you're right, he didn't look you know, Arenado-esque at third base. But the big fella, his footwork was delicious. And guess what? That's another trait that I think is so funny that's left American baseball. Like, making sure you do the fundamentals well. I know this sounds a little old man-ish, 
But you can't play on that field for Japan if you don't do the fundamentals well. And what would you rather play against? Would you rather play against a third baseman that's nasty but sometimes lackadaisical and makes the mistake? Or would you play against a third baseman that's getting everything out of his body defensively at third base? By the way, hit 56 home runs last year. And is going to make the play and be fundamentally strong. I mean... I'll take the 56 homer guy. I don't know, man. I was having a late night on the couch, and I was getting into some late night thoughts, just being honest. Okay. <laughs> simulator, I simulator. I don't know. I, I think that, I mean, it's a good point that you, that you brought up. Uh, I've talked to guys that have went over and played in Japan, and, and what they'll say is, sure as hell work a lot harder. Like they're like the double barrel batting practice, like you know the amount of work that you have to go through in that league. I think is, I'm not saying that's the only way to do it, right? But sure, that's going to make you a better player if you do it. And yeah. I wish I, I wish honestly, I sit back in my career and I, I wish I was out there every single day doing stuff like that. I think it would have made a big difference. But you know, we've kind of gone through this. We we've gone through a couple different phases. Uh, you know, at least when I was playing in pro ball, where it was like. At the beginning, get your butt out there early, work as much as possible. And I like that. I think I got better doing that. And then it became like, well, we need rest and we need to make sure that we're, our bodies are optimized. You shouldn't be lifting this way. And let's make sure that we have the right, like work smarter, not harder. And, you know, I think every single person needs to find out what works for them. And like, and you shouldn't be downplaying a guy because he doesn't you know, work as hard as you, or you shouldn't be calling it eye wash. If that guy is out there taking ground balls every single day, that just works for you. It works for, you know, baseball is such an individual game when it comes down to it. It's a bunch of individual matchups, dude. So like, you have to know it works for you. And, Trev, and I don't, I don't want anyone getting on somebody for doing something differently. Like relax a little bit, let it play out for them. And Trev, we, we've talked about it in private and, in, and on the show a few times, like if you, you came up, you were kind of the end of an era of like, Two strikes, slap the ball the other way. Like, if you came up in 2017, they would have told you try to hit home runs. <laughs> like, with your like home run and double numbers, they would have been like, we don't care if you hit, you know, 220. If you can give us 35 homers, like you're our guy. And it's it's just so funny because I know you were coached so differently. You were, you know, kind of that old school baseball coach mentality we've talked about. Uh, yeah, it's it, th things have changed a lot even now. Now we're going back to the two strike approach. Right? Aaron Judge is learning from Paul Goldschmidt and, and all this <laughs> stuff. It's like you know, just just let people do what they do, and don't always it doesn't always have to be do, doesn't always have to be what you did. I will end on a high note. I uh, you you got me down this. That's this is your fault. I will end on a highest note, Trev, um, because I did end up landing on like a. Uh, you know, because they talked about the the teacher who was the first guy to play baseball in Japan, and then uh, that Babe Ruth uh, U.S. World Tour or whatever goes over there. You know, if you told Babe Ruth, uh, what was that, a hundred years ago, that Japan was going to come and whoop up the USA's butt in baseball, it, I, I didn't know Babe well, but I think he would have gave you a big hearty chuckle and and a slap on the butt. Um, guess what? The future of baseball, man. And I wasn't here. I thought some of it was eyewash when people were talking about the WBC. I think the future of baseball in this event is massive. I mean, like Shohei's pregame speech that everyone was freaking out or, or freaking out about. Incredible. And, and properly so. Like it that was a baller move. Like I, I know you're impressed by these guys, but you know, we gotta be better than them for one day and we can. Guess what? In twenty years in Japan, I think <laughs> <laughs> the squad they're going to put on the field, even if we roll out our our guy guys at every position, is going to be neck and neck, man. Um, and some of these other countries, like, hey, is Europe, is baseball going to click in one of those countries over there? Did the Italian team spark something in my cousins? You know, are we talking Czech Republic baseball? Uh, you know, those Great Britain unis didn't help. Might have been a setback. <laughs> hey, even Peter's Australia. Look at a Summer Olympics. Australia is going to be near the top in gold medals. They got athletes down there. If Where's their baseball program going to be in 50 years? I bet they have some ballers. So I, uh, I don't know. I liked the World Baseball Classic. The internet did all its fights about it. And I did genuinely land on like where this event can take baseball in the future is pretty badass, man. 
It is. And like I said, I'll reiterate the fact that we have the premier baseball league in the world is we have to cherish it's that honor. People. It's the truth because I mean, look, there could be a day where guys like, fuck, let's just go to Japan. Why not? Look at the crowds over there. You know, if I'm Lars Noop bar, <laughs> I'm, you know, he might do some special things for the St. Louis Cardinals coming up. And Cardinals fans, I hope he does. Hope you do, Lars. I mean, that guy can go be the king of the world if he wanted to. Probably get a nice salary. Like, when he landed, he hadn't been there with the team yet. He landed at 5 a.m. and there was a crowd waiting for him. Like, <laughs> I don't know, different. man. I don't know. Um, any, anything on... Uh, <laughs> Mexico, Japan the night before, the Randy show and just everything that was displayed there. It was another incredible game, yeah. dude. This is, uh, we kept thinking, like, there's no way this game is going to top the next. We saw the U.S.-Venezuela game, and that was awesome. And then you get this game, and Randy's all over the field. And then you knew in the ninth inning when you saw who was coming up, and it was only a one-run uh, deficit. And it happened so quickly, you know, kind of like just took the wind out of Mexico's sails very, very quickly. But they did an excellent job throughout the tournament. Not only Randy, although he was, you know, he was named the uh, to the tournament, all tournament team. Uh, but there's a lot of guys who showed up there, man, who played really well, like the Urias brothers. That was awesome. Yeah. Uh, my guy, Joey Manessis out there. You know what Urias is going to bring. Uh, but there was. You know who opened my eyes a lot? Who's that? On that team, Sandoval, Patrick Sandoval. Yeah, man. Like a dog. Like he was out there like pitching like, excuse my terminology, but letting the nuts hang. Yeah. No, he, um, it's where baseball is a six sport, man. And I, and I always say this, when I talk about the third baseman, there's so many good third basemen in baseball nowadays that whoever you watch, you should think they're the best. Because if you watch Manny Machado play every night, Guess what? <laughs> there's there's no telling you that there's someone better than him at third base. You could say the same with Arenado. I've got Sox fans that would go to war for Devers, and I get why. When Devers is right, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the scariest guy in ball at the plate. Asterisk, sure, there's other guys. But that's Jose the Ramirez whole point. Exists. Jose Ramirez. Like, <laughs> you love Matt Chapman more than anything in the world. Like, So that's I where... Know. When you mentioned a Patrick Sandoval, if I had watched him have 27 starts last year to the tune of a 2.91 ERA and he pitches with the moxie he does, I would go to war with Patrick Sandoval. Uh, so, you, you, Angels fans, shout out. Like, I think you guys earn a little bonus point there. Because, um, yeah, that, that guy pitches with, with what you like. Um, and I think he's 26 or 25. Yes. Jeez. Let's, let's, let's tie a bow on this. Okay. WBC. I'm going to ask you one question. Oh, okay. Shohei Otani. Say he came into the WBC at 500 million starting point. Has mm. the starting point moved up at all, or does that matter? Did this tournament earn him money? In my opinion, yes. Okay. Um, and I, I'll give you the long and short of it quick. I think, as you well know, <laughs> every GM would love to sign Shohei Otani, the free agent. Who allows them to sign Shohei Otani, the free agent, is the owner. And I think all the baseball owners just watched what happened with the World Baseball Classic, and I think a couple of them said, let's get that guy. Um, the guy whose followers tripled on Instagram during the World Baseball Classic. 60-something million people in Japan were watching this guy throw? Trev... You know my business acumen is surprisingly small for, for some of our oh, art, for some of our articles that leak out about this damn company. <laughs> um, I think there's a way to monetize Otani on your team. That's just me. <laughs> That's just me. What uh, oh, What about you? Boy. Honestly. Yeah, I think so. We have we've never seen him on a big stage before. Really, am I right? Couple, couple Friday night games here. No, and there. did he see him in the last, baseball classic? Last baseball classic as a kid, wasn't that the no, thing? No, he. I don't think or he no, was he on was the too team, young, but he, right? in 2016, he, he they won the championship and he pitched. I mean, I'm talking about 
against yeah. the best players in the world doing it. I mean, and 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 honestly, that pregame speech, I know people are making a fuss over. They should. That was about as perfect of an answer or a speech as you can give if you're Shohei Otani. I mean, he's keeping in line with the Japanese like culture and like the respect that they have. He's saying, look, we can't admire these guys. He said, for one day, let's not admire these guys. And so we can surpass them. And it was, I mean, it's everything that you want in a player, man. Uh, so I, I, yes, I am. Yes. I think, I think he might approach $600 million. I do. When a person breaks the mold, there's a part of us as a society that wants them to be special. It's part of the reason why Jackie Robinson is looked upon as like one of the best ever. Cause he came in, he was like, he was kind of the show of his time. He was a track star. Like he, he did everything good. He came in, um, he did that. What Otani is doing, it's unreal. And it's uh, the thing that, and I'm, okay, this might be a little past where I'd like to step. I think in John Smoltz's voice, it doesn't hurt John Smoltz that Otani can hit. Because I think John Smoltz in his core is like, well, if I got the chance to hit, I could have hit. Like, you know, the coaches told me to stop. I think it blows his mind that Otani's so fast. And it blows my mind too. Like everything everything and you don't think that guy could go out there and win a gold glove if he wanted to he's one of the fastest people in the big leagues and he's fucking huge does he have a good arm yeah a little bit run to third on him <laughs> he should you know what a little crow hop in there I'm, i am gonna i am gonna call up and just say let him play there for a year fuck it let's see what happens then he could really shut everybody up if the angels fan if the I know we've dreamt about this a little bit. If the Angels' hand got forced, and say they're in the race, and they need Otani to do like a CC Sabathia and Brewers performance, where he's like starting. If he's imagine if he's relieving on his throw days or something like huh. I, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I guess a girl can dream. Um, and an awesome WBC. Uh, I'm gonna be very excited for the next one. Um, and I. I keep pretending like I have a closing note. Um, dude, after how big it was, I never thought MLB would consider altering the schedule. I think they can, man, because there's so much money that can be made at it at an international level to juggle the schedule every three years. Like, before the past two nights of games, I did not think that could ever happen. After the last two nights, I think there's a chance. I, money talks. And I think you can figure it out. I got another thing I want to say. Yes! yes. And this is brought to you by Manscaped. Yeah. I Manscaped the other day, landing strip. If you haven't already heard, <laughs> the leaders in below the waist grooming are traveling north of your South Pole with their revolutionary <laughs> beard hedger pro kit. And now they've got the brand new Weed Whacker 2.0. That's right. We just got those they in the send office. It to me. Yeah, it's nice. The nose nice. and ear trimmer. I'll, I'll be honest, Poppy's needed it. Um, and if it's time to upgrade your toolbox by going to manscaped.com and using code TALKING, 20% off plus free shipping. The kit comes with beard shampoo, conditioner, beard oil, beard balm, and the performance package 4.0, the full body grooming experience man the weed whacker 2.0 and the 4.0 why don't you go to manscape.com use code talking 20 percent off and free ship and link in the description trev i came on some show that i do on this platform and i said if the u.s doesn't win this thing it is a disaster and a failure i am here now taking back those words because I believe in my heart that it was not a failure and it was not a disaster that these dudes went out there and gave everything that they had played with incredible emotion, stepped up to the plate. When things were looking bad, they stepped up, they get to the finals, they ran into a buzzsaw like that's baseball. So I want to make sure that I let everyone know that I'm sorry about that take Mm. And that I think that we should all be incredibly proud of the dudes that freaking strapped up for the US of A. And I want to give them one final salute because they played their hearts out. You're absolutely I'm serious. Right. I'm like that's I'm sincere too, because they 
that was special, man. And I, I'll, I'll double back on myself. I, I don't want th- people thinking I'm doing the, oh, U.S. didn't have their best pitchers. Like, no, you're right. The pitchers were not the pro- They held Japan to three. Um, and, yeah, man. I mean, I, hey, I, Kyle Schwarber. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, in that moment, you, Darvish, out of the pen, um, yeah, man, all, all the guys, all the guys brought it for Team USA, man. Um, McNeil in that walk. Shout yeah. out Mark DeRosa. He was going to get every managerial opportunity that he wants now. Yeah, I wonder if he wants it. Because um, he kind of gave that honest interview. He's like, it felt like it's been six months and I'm super yeah. stressed out. <laughs> All right, so you're <laughs> having fun, Mark? Um, and I didn't like... He gave Ben. He he copied Benji Gill. Benji Gill after the game dropped a you know baseball one tonight. Even though we lost, he kind of ran it back. And I don't know. He just needed to twist the words a little bit for me. Um, but Trev, I do think you got one step closer to the throne, buddy. I mean, I'm as patriotic as they come. I'm a two time guy. Hell yeah. Who would you bring in as pitching coach? Ooh, Gibby. Gosh, Gibby would be an incredible pitching coach. Iconic. That's a that's a really good one. Just right off the bat that you threw at me, so now I have to kind of go with that one. Is a good um, one. Um. Hmm. By that time, twenty twenty six. Yeah. Maybe Chris Archer. Okay. And yeah. maybe he could even like Nelson Cruz it for you, like pitch an inning uh, and be a no, coach no, too. Not on my team, sorry, Chris. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Not on my team. I'll let you two Opener figure that out. Sure. I'll let you two figure that out. Um, okay. We're one step closer. Um, awesome WBC. Uh, Trev, we got them. Um, I, I, and I think we can keep this fairly high and tight because we haven't gotten the official update, but it sounds like we're getting some tweaks to the pitch clock rules, which, you know, you... I'll give you a little bit of credit where credit's due. You were you were kind of on it. We'll see if they come out with your playoff suggestion because did anyone mind the pace of play in the WBC last night? I did not. Um, and there was no pitch clock going on there. So we'll see if they mention the playoffs. I mean, what baseball deserves credit on is that even if they don't announce something like that, they could like a week before the playoffs. They've, they have made changes when they've needed to be addressed. So credit there. Um, and I think they're addressing some of the funny business we've seen this spring training with pitchers trying to trick hitters with the, the pitch clock and the eight-second mark and, um, you know, uh, some of the other, the 15 seconds with no runners on base. I think people are saying that's a little tight. So we'll, we'll, I think we're getting the final update soon, but it, it feels like, again, we're on the right path. Well, this is what I was hoping for when we implemented these rules. Like, let's let's see how they work, and then we could make some adjustments because that's common sense, right? Let's just not say we're going to do something, and if it doesn't work, keep doing it. Uh, I did get official word that they're not going to change it in the postseason as of yet. Okay. Um, I know some guys on the competition Oops. committee. How about that? Oops. Uh, most of the things that are going to be changed are going to be small tweaks, things that kind of also just make sense. Like we're talking about the batter having to be in an alert at eight seconds. I think they're going to move that down a few seconds where they don't have to be sitting there for eight seconds if the pitcher wants them to. Mm. Um, also, if they call time out as of now, uh, as soon as they step in the box, the the clock starts. So then it could be 15 seconds that you're right. sitting there. So now they're going to try to change that a little bit as well. Other stuff with guys making the last outs, or catching like a defensive right. play in the last out, the catcher leading off. Like it's going to be more so like umpire discretion, like when to start the clocks. And if the clocks do get started a little too early, he can wave them off, which, you know, say what you want about umpires having more control. I think at least that's a step in the right direction instead of just these cut and dry right. uh, rules that like, you know, there's things happen in a baseball game, dude. So my question to my friends there on the competition committee was how receptive has. MLB been to what the players have said and the answer was like what you think like not really receptive but kind of like like right. they're listening so I believe there's going to be more meetings about this throughout the season uh, and I implore everyone to just give it a chance 
you know, we, we haven't even hit the regular season yet. Let's, let's see how it works in 162. Uh, we can talk about it during the, during the season, because, you know, some of these quotes by the guys that are making the decisions here, they're saying like, yeah, let's a small tweak that needs to be made. We can do that. Like there are things they're willing to do. Cause I, I ultimately, I believe they want to get this right. Uh, but postseason, I think is, from what I've heard, is off the table. So Man- Manfred probably saw my tweet. Yeah. I know he's got all those burners out there checking what I'm doing all the time. He's got to kind of lay off me a little bit. It's a little creepy sometimes. But I think they're headed in the right direction. <laughs> he he doesn't want you getting the credit right away. If he waits till September, then you don't get the credit. Um, yeah. And I respect that from a, bit, a little bit of a power, power play. Um, yeah, man, in the... Uh, you know, hey, I th- I think people might have heard it in my voice. It, it sounded a little bit like I was sucking up to the rules committee, but our rules episode that we did at Winter Meetings has been one of our biggest episodes recently, and those are the guys. Like yeah. uh, Glenn, who gets quoted in the in the article, we we spent a day with him. Um, you know, Raul Ibanez. Who's our other guy? Morgan he, Sword. Morgan Sword. I was gonna say he's always got like great a, name. He's got a Game of Thrones name. <laughs> like, okay, so you're <laughs> gonna kill me. Um, those guys are literally the ones on the button, and they uh, they like us. We like them, and and yeah, let's let's see some logic. And when we need to make changes and some iterations, we do that. Um, man, week out, Trev. Yeah, it's time to get our heads back into the grind because this was a quick pace tournament. We were just kind of covering that. It kind of came out of nowhere where the games were just so good. You had to just kind of only focus on that and kind of forgot about spring training altogether. But now, yes, now it's time remembering all the 30 teams, what they did before. And I don't know if we want to like let people know about like kind of what's what's cracking on talking baseball. Is it a time to say that? I think or we could discuss it. Talk about it. We can discuss it. That, I th- please. Oh, I think that you and I are going to be handling the recap episodes. And James will be visiting us during the midweek ep. So Monday and Friday, uh, it'll be the three amigos here, players only, recapping. Uh, with the occasional fill-in because, you know, we still have some schedules. You and I are on. busy guys. We're busy guys. Yeah. Um, But Wednesdays, we'll all be together. And uh, I think that... This is going to be a good year. We're going to reformat a few things, but we're trying to constantly improve the show as best we can. I think we're doing that. Yeah, if you uh, if you guys have some thoughts, comments, feedback, tweet. I guess tweet at me, Beebs, and Trev in the next couple of days for the series recap episodes because we yeah, we'll put our heads together in the next few days and figure out exactly yeah. how we want to attack those. Co- we want to cover it the best way we can for all baseball fans. That's the goal, right? So, um, and John. Um, he, uh, I think you'll see him make appearances on Monday when we have those big topics, you know, even, even yeah. for a 20 minute, something like that. I think you'll see a chunk of that. Um, cause just, you know, full disclosure with the people, we peel the curtain back. It's, it's all real. We got like 70 employees. Now we got there's shit, there's shit everywhere. Um, and I hope you guys are enjoying it cause it's, there's some really good content we're pumping out in every aspect, silly stuff, baseball stuff. Other sports. There's a boxing guy now. Obio. Mm. Not a Who bad. Is that? Not a bad he baseball just sent player me himself. Quite a video. Okay. Interested in that. Can't talk about it quite yet, but. Um. So yeah, I'm uh I'm so excited to get into it. I mean, even talking about that one World Baseball Classic game. Um. The juices are flowing, and I'm excited to see you know what what young guys are next in in all of it. The the thrills of a season. And uh, in a way, like this is, is this our first regular season? Or was, when was the lockout? Was that last year? Yeah, 2020, we had COVID, then we had the lockout. So this was like a regular spring training into the season for us. We haven't had that COVID. Yet, right. Well, even now, this doesn't really count because of WBC. WBC. So what is normal? Not much in the simulation, Trev. I'll tell you that much. Send me some more of those Megalodon videos. That thing was. I'm sending. Maybe my... BBD can cool. like post a link or something because this thing got me for a while. I watched that thing quite a bit. <laughs> so Teddy, he was like, "What is that real?" I'm like, "Kinda close, <laughs> maybe." Kinda. What's real? Um, I like I I don't know. I think, I think we send Teddy to Japan for a year, put in that work, comes back, 
Oh, and then he That's plays the for Team Japan, though. Fuck. Yeah. Team USA needs him. Never mind. We can't risk that. I think I'm going to do some content with Teddy this year. We've, I've mentioned it to you guys okay. a little bit, but we're going to, we're going to see a little bit more old Tedster on okay. the mic, I think. Team Egypt, right? We could sneak I, him on I that. I would love to go out there. Let's get him on Team, team Egypt. Egypt, Teddy? All right. Egyptians and I are real close. We'll, uh, I think we'll wrap it up. We, uh, Man, we emptied the tank hard there and some news at the end. So we will see you guys Monday. Monday? Right? Yes. One of our drafts, a special one. Is it prop bets? No. Position units, Jake Oh, position. Unless you really want it Monday and we can can flip them. We'll figure it out. Just need to give people winners. That's all I do. Talking Yanks tomorrow might be giving out some winners, I think. Talking Yanks tomorrow. Pirates are my surprise team of the year. They were mine. Watch their TPP.